telling you, please, don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance, and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them. Some of y'all, get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please. Don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them, some of y'all. Get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please, don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? want to put our disclaimer up here. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James Ophir here with you. And I always want to let you know that when you are watching A Word from the Lord or what does the Bible say, you need to be careful because you're hearing the truth. And uh, the truth can either cut you to the heart and make you mad or it can actually make you glad. So we hope that you are in the latter group and that you will come and examine the Church of Christ. We are meeting in Eden at 250 the Boulevard. You're welcome to come and study the Bible with us. 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me. Or 336-394-5721 or word from the Lord at gmail.com. Any of those ways you can reach us, you'd be, we'd be glad to hear from you. If you are in the Martinsville or Danville area, you can uh, assemble with the Church of Christ, 823 Starling Avenue or 120 American Legion. And uh, those brethren will always give you a warm welcome out there, I can assure you, and you will certainly be uh, welcome to ask questions uh, about anything you hear or see or anything like that. We certainly want you to feel free to do that very thing. We want to uh, invite you to come to the tent. I know a lot has been said about the tent that's going to start June 22nd. We want you to uh, come to the tent. It's going to be set up there at uh, 335 Mount Cross Road uh, next to uh, Leggett's and CarQuest Auto Parts. And so we want you to come out and be with there. You know, we, when we invite people to come out to the tent, we want you to realize 
uh, that, you know, there may be people that you know, maybe people from, from where you work, maybe your neighbors are there. You may be surprised at who you'll find there, but usually there's a good crowd under the tent and uh, friends, a warm welcome. There's always a microphone where you can ask questions. Come on out to the tent. Come out to the tent. Um, something that we want to invite you to do. Bring your, bring the kids, you know. Jesus had suffering out the little children. We don't mind hearing a, a baby cry now and then or uh, seeing your, the kids run around. They, uh, uh, there are a number of children that are out and about, and uh, they are there, and they are learning firsthand what it's like to plainly and boldly preach the Word of God. And so our children, the children uh, of members of the Church of Christ are there, and we're trying to train them up to uh, love the Lord, love the work of the Lord, and see that things like tent meetings go on uh, in this area or wherever they may be. And so come on out to the tent. Also, bring your, bring your pastor. You know, don't be, a, don't be a chicken. That's a guinea up there. Don't be a chicken. Just come on and bring your pastor. Tell him not to be afraid. Uh, tell him to uh, uh, come on out to the tent. Bring your Bible. And bring your, uh, uh, bring your questions. Uh, have them come out. There, there'll be a microphone there where they can uh, ask a question and give, a, give an answer for why they believe what they believe or question what, what is being taught. Come on out to the, to the tent. We want to see you there. So uh, I just want you to know, friends, that I, I hope to see you there. I'll be there. Uh, the folks meeting will be there. We'll be uh, out knocking doors, so we hope to see you. Friends, when we do this, I heard some of the callers from the last, the last hour talking about uh, questioning our motives. And I really want you to know, friends, that we are really concerned about the truth and we're concerned about finding the truth and helping you see the truth. Now, you may have a hard time believing that. You may not believe that. But I can assure you that's really what we're trying to do. And it may be that what you are believing as the truth is really a myth. You know, myths are things that, that are made up in order to uh, try to explain something, and, uh, why something uh, happens the way it does, or why something uh, is, is caused the way it does. You know, it was a myth that they thought the, the sun was carried on the back of a big turtle across the sky. All these things are, are things that people make up in order to try to explain something that they know to be real. And oftentimes when people look at the Bible, they turn to a myth instead of turning to the truth. And we're trying to help you understand the truth, trying to help you see the truth. And that's what we're trying to do. The last, uh, the last hour, I know you saw this, but we're trying to uncover the truth and help you to see that there are some individuals that are trying to cover it up. We're trying to unearth it, and they're trying to cover it up. And we're trying to be the ones who are trying to explain to you the truth to help you see through the myths. You know, the Bible actually talks about myths. The Bible actually talks about believing a myth or believing a fable or fiction. It actually warns against it. Did you know that? For example, look at this. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4, Neither give heed to fables or endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. So do. So Paul says don't give heed to fables. That word fable is actually a word that means myth. It means myth. 1 Timothy 4 verse 7, But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. You see, watch out for the fables. Watch out for the myths. Uh, 2 Timothy 4 verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. That's what we're trying to get you to see, friends. Individuals who don't tell you the truth, don't give you really a word from the Lord, or don't, uh, allow you to question what does the Bible say when it comes to what they teach, they're actually telling you myths. They're telling you fables. That word is the word for fiction. They're telling you a tale. They're telling you a tall tale, and they want you to believe that it's the truth when in reality it's a myth. Paul said in, in Titus 1 verse 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. We are, friends, trying to get you to turn to the truth and from the fables. Turn away from the fables, turn to the truth. And that's why in the Church of Christ, we want you to see, we want you to, us to look at us as myth busters. Because, friends, the Bible can shed a lot of light on many myths that you believe. 
And it may be that you're believing a myth that you didn't even know was a myth. You thought it was truth. You accepted it as truth, and you never questioned it uh, at all. But if you just went to the Bible, you would say, you know what? That is, that is a fable. That is fiction. That's a myth. And that is what we're trying to bring you, friends. We are all about shattering fiction by bringing you Bible facts. The Church of Christ are myth busters. We are, we are the myth busters. We are the ones who are talking to you about religious myths and trying to get you to see that, you know what, the truth of the matter really is that God says something different than what you believe. And so when we come to you, we only bring to you a word from the Lord because that is what's going to bust myths. Peter said in 2 Peter 1 verse 16, look what he says, We have not followed cunningly devised fables. There's that word again. Cunningly devised fiction, cunningly devised myths. And I can assure you, friends, there are a multitude of myths that people believe in the name of religion or in the name of what God says and reality are, they are myths, they're fiction. And when we bust the myth, when we expose the myth, when we uncover the truth, sometimes people get mad. We're not trying to make you mad at us. We're trying to get you to see that we're trying to do you a favor. We're trying to do you a service by exposing, exposing myths by giving you the truth. Now, I want you to consider something. Many times myths uh, are not realized. You may not re realize that some things that you have been believing are really falsehoods. They're fictions. And if you would have just gone to the Bible or if you had gotten all the information from the Bible that you needed, you'd be able to bust that myth wide open. You'd be able to bust it wide open, and you could say without a shadow of doubt, that's a myth. That's a myth. I know you watch this show Mythbusters on TV. I know you watch these guys, and you like to see whether something is true or not. I've been to their websites. They have all kinds of, of uh, uh, inquiries about myths, things that people have heard, and to find out if it's true or not. You know? Is it really true that... That a, that a car can can uh, had a rocket on it and flies flies through the air, flies off a cliff. Is it is it true that a, that a car can be smashed into a pancake by two trucks? You know what we're talking about? Myths, things that people have heard, old wives' tales, old fables. Is it true? You know, some people believe Bigfoot. They believe in the extraterrestrials, but the things can't be proven. But yet they believe them as real. Well, if you would just go to the Bible, there are some things that can easily be disproven. Some myths that can be easily be busted if you would just have opened the book. And I submit, I submit to you, friends, that there are many people who are believing a lot more myths than they realize. And I want to show you one. Here's a for example. Just an example, I want to, want to help you to realize that the Bible can expose some modern myths if you would just open it. You know, everybody talks about global warming. They're here about, well, global warming this, global warming that. You know, the temperature is rising, the ice caps are melting, and pretty soon polar bears are going to be floating down the, down the, uh, 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 the ocean on a little ice cube, and they're going to drown because all the water is melting, and floods are going to rise, and New York City is going to be underwater, and the New Orleans is going to be flooded again, and pretty soon we're just going to be a small island because all the water is melting. Well, is global warming a myth, or is it true? You know this guy, Al Gore, he's always talking about uh, a global warming has a movie, inconvenient, uh, an inconvenient truth or a convenient lie. I don't, I don't know what the name of it was for sure, but I know he's out here promoting global warming. Did you know the Bible can shed some light on that? You know, now there's a lot of common sense things that can shed light on myths and bust them if you just use your head. Now watch this. You know, the myth is that the earth is getting warmer and that the ice caps are melting and that pretty soon we're going to be flooded because the water levels are going to rise and so forth. We're destroying the planet. That's a myth. That's a myth. The fact of the matter is that the earth is actually cooling down at this point in time, and the fact of the matter is that the earth goes in cycles. It'll go through a hot spell and then a cold spell. There are different climatic things that make the temperature go up and, the, and that make the temperature go down. El Nino made the temperature go up, but about 10 years before that, there was, a, there was a, the eruption of Mount 
uh, Pinatubo that actually caused the temperature of the earth to go down because all the ash and soot was in the air and kept the sun from getting in and it cooled the earth. You see, there's cycles that go around. The fact of the matter is the earth is not going to burn up into a crisp and we're not going to be one big ball of fire because the truth is there if you'll just find it. As a matter of fact, you know the man that founded the Weather Channel actually made a statement that the global warming myth is a scam. Here's what he says. He says, it's the greatest scam in history. I'm amazed, appalled, and highly offended by it. Global warming is a scam. Some dastardly scientists with environmental and political motives manipulated long-term scientific data to create an illusion of rapid global warming. That's what John Coleman, the founder of the Weather Channel, said. Friend, that's a myth. That's a myth that we're getting warmer. He says it's a scam. I agree with him. It is nothing but a scam. It wasn't just a number of years ago. I remember talking about the earth is cooling. We're going to go to another ice age. But yet people conveniently forget that, and they start believing one myth in exchange for another myth. You know? Now look at this. But watch this, friends. If you had just gone to the Bible, the Bible has always had the answer. The Bible has always had the answer about global warming if we just opened it up and looked. After Noah got off the ark and the rainbow was in the sky, look what the Bible says in Genesis 8 and verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. You could have read through the first eight chapters of Genesis and you would have known the answer to global warming right then. You just looked at it. You know, there's a lot of people who claim to be who claim to be Christians, who claim to be believing the Bible, Bible believers, and they're caught up in the myth of global warming all because they didn't read the Bible. You see how simple it is? The Bible has the answer to the myth busted. This myth is busted if you just read the first eight chapters of the Bible. It's right there. See, man's not going to destroy this planet. You know, man may not be a good steward. Man may not be a good steward of what God has, has, has left us with, but man is not going to destroy the earth. Man is not going to destroy this earth to the point that we can't live on it. Man will destroy himself before he destroys the earth. As a matter of fact, look at this. In Hebrews 1, verses uh, 1 through 3, let me get my Bible program up here for you because I know that... Uh, uh, I know I need to have that open, and I forgot to open it. But Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3, says that God is, is maintaining the Word, upholding the Word, upholding the world through the power of His Word. Notice this. Hebrews chapter 1. Get it here. Apologize for this. God, who at sundry times in a diverse manner, spake in times past unto the fathers, by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being, in the, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Everything is in place by the power of God's word. Friends, man can't destroy the earth. That's, that's a myth. That's a bald-faced lie to think that man is going to destroy the earth or that we're destroying the earth because we're out here putting carbon dioxide in the air. Everybody who believes that carbon dioxide is running the earth, I wish they would just hold their breath. That would be the solution, wouldn't it? All these people who are professing uh, global warming, if they just hold their breath, you know what? We cut down the carbon dioxide. I see all these false teachers out here uh, espousing things that aren't in the Bible, missing in the Bible. If, they would, if we could shut their mouths, and we're trying, we're trying to cut down on the global warming by shutting their, by shutting their mouths. And that's what the Bible says in, in Titus 1 verse 9. We're not saying anything the Bible doesn't say. The Bible says their mouths must be stopped. We're trying. You see? Colossians 1 verse 16. Look at this. Colossians 1 verse 16. Here's what... Here's what Paul says. Colossians 1 verse 16. 
and he is before all things, and by him all things consist, speaking of Christ, and he is the head of the body. Uh, sorry, we should have gone to 16. For by him were all things created and that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Friends, we're not going to destroy the earth. But my point is, this one little thing, like global warming, and the destruction of the earth could be answered if we just open the book. The Bible can bust these myths. Now, let me give you another one. Here's a myth that is pretty, pretty common, but I submit to you that if we just open the Bible, we'd have an answer to this. Interracial marriage is sinful. That's a myth. I hear people all the time say, well, it's wrong for a white man to marry a black woman. It's wrong for a black man to marry a white woman. I don't hear many people talking about it if it's bad or not for a black man to marry a brown uh, woman. Is it wrong for a black person to marry a brown person? Or a brown person to marry a white person? But for some reason, when you get the blacks and the whites married together, oh, that's a sin. Is that right? I say that's a, that's a myth. That's a myth. Listen, God did forbid the marrying of some individuals, but it was only because one group of people were sinful, it had nothing to do with their race. See? It's a myth to say that God doesn't want people of different races to marry. That's a myth. The fact of the matter is, God says specifically, don't marry a certain group of people because of their sin. Look, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let's just look at it. Deuteronomy 7. Here we go. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out the nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou, verse 2, and when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter uh, thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will my anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Don't marry him, he says, because they'll turn your heart away. Had nothing to do with their race. Had everything to do with the fact that they would turn the hearts of God's people away from him. Now, why would God say utterly destroy them? Well, all we have to do is back up to Genesis chapter 15. See how easy this myth, myth is being busted? In Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, and we're going to look in verse uh, 16. Now we're going to back up here to... Uh, uh, verse 13, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out into great substance. Verse 15, And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. You see what the point is? God says to Abraham, I'm not going to give you and your descendants, I'm not going to give this, to, this land to them yet because the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. In Deuteronomy 7, the Amorites were one of these individuals who, who God was utterly destroy. So when God's people came out to possess the land of Canaan, it was going to serve two purposes. It was going to fulfill the promise that he made to Abraham, I'm going to give you this land, and it was going to destroy these people because of their iniquity. And that's why God says, don't marry them. Don't marry them. It wasn't because of their race, but it had everything to do with the fact that they were wicked people. You see how easy the myth is busted? See how easy it is to bust? Notice this in Deuteronomy 21, verse 10. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, that the Lord thy God hath delivered them into thy hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman, and hast desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to, uh, be, to thy wife, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails. 
Why didn't God say, well, when you see a woman you want to make a wife, well, you can't do it because she's not of the same race. He didn't say that. Why? Because that's a myth to say that it's wrong to marry interracially. Listen, God has given laws for marriage and the conditions have nothing to do with the race but everything to do with the marriageability of the person concerning their relationship with God. In other words, God said one man and one woman for life. That was his plan. And a person who has been uh, put away for adultery, they're not eligible to marry. But two people who have never been married before, they, they have a right to marry. That's God's law on marriage. And nothing, nothing is gonna, can stop that. You see, God didn't put any conditions about race in marriage. Matthew 19, in verse 3, Pharisees came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered unto them, Have you not read he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female? And for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let a man put asunder. Think about it. Eve was the mother of all living. That's what Adam called her. Every race that you and I can see today, every race on the face of the earth, came from Adam and Eve. Every race. Now why is it that one race thinks they're better than another race? Or why is it that we would think that God would say to one race, don't marry another race? You see, that's a myth. That's a myth. Here's God's law on marriage. It's one man and one woman for life. The only exception, the only exception is this. Matthew 19, 9. I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except to be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her that is put away, if she's put away for something other than the exception, whoso put away his wife, and shall marry another, commit adultery, and whoever marries her that's put away commits adultery. Except they put away for fornication. See how simple it is? It has nothing to do with race. As a matter of fact, when God is giving the, the conditions for, for marriage, why didn't he put race in there if it was so important? We can go ahead and put the phone lines up if you want to. See, why is it so important? Listen. This is how God feels about marriage. Again, nothing is said Nothing is said about race. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. That means you don't be shacking up before you get married. That's a sin. He said, well, I love them. No, you got to be married. It's a sin, shack up. I don't care what race you are. Look, God has given the law on marriage. But you see this myth that, well, it's, it's wrong to intermarry. It's wrong to have this interracial marriage. You can't find it in the Bible. You can't find it in the Bible. That's a devil's lie. That's a myth. And, and understanding or reading the Bible, that'll bust that myth. Listen, here's what, here's what uh, God said. You see this woman? You want, you want her to be your wife? You take her home, you shave her head, you pair her nails, and she shall put the raiment of her captive off of her and shall remain in thine house and be well her father and her mother a full month, and after that thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. God didn't say anything about, well, but she's a different race. See? If it wasn't allowed, why did God give those instructions? Why did God give those instructions if enter... Racial marriage wouldn't allow. You see? That's a myth. That's a myth. Listen, if you, if you think it's wrong, you need to take it up with Moses. Look at this. Moses married an Ethiopian. In Numbers, 20, uh, Numbers 12, verse 1, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Now, last time I checked, Ethiopians were pretty dark-skinned. Seems to me like Miriam and, and Aaron had something, something a uh, little, little prejudice there. They had something against the fact that Moses married an Ethiopian. 
God didn't say anything about that. As a matter of fact, if you come on down and read in Numbers chapter 12, listen to what God says about Moses. After they said that, the Lord came down the pillar and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house. He said, I'm not going to talk to Moses as I do all these other prophets. Here's, what, how, I'm going to, here's how I'm going to talk to Moses. For with him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Therefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? See? God didn't, God didn't condemn Moses. He actually defended him. He said, look, he's my servant. He's a prophet. I'm actually going to talk to him in a way that I won't talk to any other prophets. Why? Well, it wasn't because of anything that Moses had done as far as marriage was concerned. That's a myth. Now, friends, this is why I'm telling you this. I'm trying to get you to see that if you read the Bible, there'll be a lot of myths that'll be easily busted. Look at this. In Genesis 41, 45, Pharaoh called Joseph's name uh, Zaphnath, uh, Paniah, and he gave him to wife Asnath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, and Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Joseph married an Egyptian. Oh, that was a sin. No, not what? Not what? Wasn't a sin. Boaz, he married Ruth. Just read number, Ruth uh, 4, verses 9 through 10. Listen. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilean's and Malahans of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead among his upon his inheritance. And the name of the dead shall not be cut off from among his brethren, and from the gate of his place ye are witnesses this day. Boaz married Ruth. She was a Moabitess. She was another race. Oh, interracial marriage. That's wrong. No. Not what? Matter of fact, she's in the genealogy of Christ. See, it's 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 a it's a myth. It's a myth to say interracial marriage is is a sin, that God doesn't approve of it. Now, here's why I'm saying all this, friends. I'm trying to get you to say, you know, if these were facts that were well known, and people looked at these things as facts and not myths. They didn't believe the myths, but instead they believed the, the, the facts. Don't you think it'd be a better world? It'd put an end to all this racism. It'd put an end to all this racial hatred and racial supremacy. You know, the KKK, they were saying, well, white power, white supremacy. And here's a nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, saying black power, black supremacy. What's the difference? One of them, one, they're both saying that a particular race is greater than the other race. No, not in God's book, not in God's book. I was watching something on the History Channel the other day about uh, these, uh, uh, these skinheads and so forth in the, in, the, in the KKK saying, white power, we got to keep our, our bloodline pure, and then they do it in the name of Jesus. Hello, Jesus was a Jew. Why don't you read the Bible, and it'll bust that myth, you see? You see how reading the Bible will take care of a lot of these problems? Open the Bible. Listen to what it says in Acts 10, 34 and 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God has no respect of persons. But in every nation he that feareth him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. Accepted with him. Acts 17, 24. Let's see if we can put this up here. Acts 17, verse 24. Listen to what God said. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with, with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath 
and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation. God made all men out of one blood. It doesn't matter. You go down here to the to the blood bank, you need blood. You don't know where it come out of a black man or a yellow man or a red man or a green man. You don't know who it came from. Why? Because God designed human beings to function with the same blood. Now, this idea that one race is superior to the other could be easily busted if we just opened a book. Now, why am I saying all that? Why am I going to all this trouble? Here's my point, friends. If there were some other myths that you thought were facts, could it be the case that we might open the Bible and show you some truth that will bust a myth that you've always believed? If we were to convince you and you look at us in the, in the light of saying, you know what, these, these folks are actually showing us some of the Bible, things in the Bible that maybe I hadn't heard of before, maybe I didn't realize before. Would you at least give us the benefit of the doubt of saying, you know what, I'm going to listen to them because they may be giving me some truth that will actually bust a myth that I have been believing all along. I thought the Bible taught this. I thought this was actually in the Bible. I thought this was truth. In reality, it's a myth. And friends, that's what our goal is going to be. The next week, you heard uh, uh, Johnny say it, 21 hours, we're going to be on TV. We're going to try to, to break some myths, some bust some, some fables, to get rid of the fiction that you're believing to help you see the truth. That's why we go to these places and talk to these, these denominational preachers. That's why we try to help you to see the, uh, the, the myth that's going on behind uh, the scenes. You're on the word from the Lord. Welcome to the program. Where does it say in the Bible that if you are in a dom denomination church that you will not go to heaven? Where does it say in the Bible to, to, uh, uh, to be in a denomination church? Yes, sir. If you, if, where does it say in the Bible that, because I heard the first program where Johnny was talking, you said if you're in a denomination church, you will not go to heaven because it's not in the Bible. You said where's baptism and all that in the Bible, but it does not say that. The Bible says, upon this rock I build my church. Doesn't it say that? It does, Matthew 16, 18. So whose church is it? His church, God's church. But still, the Baptists are still preaching God. No, they're not. If they're preaching, if they're preaching God's word, why would they then preach doctrines that aren't in the Bible? See, I don't have to find what's what's condemned in the Bible specifically. If I can find what God wants, I know that everything else is condemned. Now, do I have to tell you everything that I don't want, or do I just tell you what I want, and you know everything else is excluded? So if you are in the Baptist church, you, that means you're not going to heaven. That's right, because it's not in the book. See, the Bible says the Bible says there's one there's one church. Watch this, Ephesians four four. There is one body, right? Yeah. You with me? One body. Now let's find out what that body is in Ephesians chapter one verse twenty two. One body. He gave him gave Christ, he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body. How many bodies were there? One body. One body. So if the, if the church is his body, how many churches are there? There's one church. One church. But that's now, in Jesus though. I'm sorry? That's the church in Jesus though. That, that's right, the church of Jesus. Yeah, if you're believing in Jesus, if you're teaching and preaching Jesus, because there's no church can make you go to heaven or hell. It's Jesus. He's the only one who can forgive you. Well, now, now, now stay with me. Let's, let's do one more then. Ephesians. We're still in Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 23. How many, how many churches were there? There's one church. One church. How many bodies were there? There's one body. One body. One body, one church. Okay, now watch this. Ephesians 5, 23. 
Christ is the head of the church, which is, and he is the Savior of the body. So there's one church, Christ the head of it, and, there's one, and that's the one body, and he's the Savior of it. Now here's my question. If you're in the Baptist church that's not in the Bible, therefore it's not part of the church of Christ, how are you going to be saved? See, it's a different body. If there's one, one church and one body and Christ is going to save that one body and you're in a different body, you have to conclude that, you know what, I, I'm not going to be saved. I'm not going to be in the church or the body that's going to be saved. But if you're preaching Jesus and you're preaching remission of sins and you're preaching baptism, I don't understand. What if it's a non-denomination church? Well, what about what about just using the church that's in the Bible? How about just the church of Christ? The church that Jesus said upon his rock I'll build. How how do you how do you know which church we're talking about if you don't know how if you don't know what it looks like? In other words, if I told you, if I told you, meet me down here, meet me at the restaurant, and I'll buy you supper. Are you what are you gonna say? What restaurant? Which restaurant? Well, you know, the one that serves food. Is that going to be good enough? Are you going to want some... I, I see what you're saying, but I still don't agree with it. Though. Well, I'm just saying, though, if you're saying one church is good as another, so, you know, they're all part of Christ. I'm saying I'm saying, the Baptist is their own church. You, you understand what you're saying? I know. The Baptist is part of the body. The Baptist is part of the Baptist body, not the body of Christ. If, if you say the Baptist Church is part of the body of Christ, then why, don't, why can't we find it in the Bible that says the Baptist Church is part of the body of Christ? Why didn't, why didn't, God, why didn't he talk about it if he thought so much about it? But it doesn't say that you're going to hell if you're not in, in the... Um, if, you go, if you're in a denomination of the church. It, it doesn't say that. It does right here. He's the Savior of the body. Now, he doesn't have to say, and he's not the Savior of denominational bodies. Does he have to say, and he's not going to save the Baptist church, and he's not going to save the Methodist church, and he's not going to save the Pentecostal church? Does he have to do all that? Or can he just say what he's going to save, save and you know that everything else is excluded? All right, I don't understand... Jesus died on the cross for, for we will not have to go to hell for the remissions of sin, right? If, so to, when, when, to all who will obey. So if that was so big, if that was so, a big deal, if that was, if he didn't want us to go to hell, wouldn't he tell us that? In the, wouldn't he tell us that um, if we go to a, a, a non-denomination, if we go to a denomination church, we will not go to heaven? No. Still, no. Still preaching Jesus, though. It's still, but, but listen, listen, sir. He expects you to use some, use some common sense. If he tells you what he wants, why does he have to tell you what he doesn't want? If, if you go to that restaurant and you order something from the menu, do you tell the waitress what you don't want or do you tell her what you want? It's people getting saved in denominations. Are you, are, listen to me. When you go to the restaurant and you order from the menu, you order an item off the menu. Do you have to tell her, now, I don't want this, 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 or you just tell her what you want, and she brings it? You tell her what you want. So why don't you have to say, and I don't want the chicken fried steak, I don't want the cheeseburger, I don't want the, the tacos, why don't you just tell her, why do you, why do you not have to do that? Because you know, and she knows, that when you tell her what you want, that excludes everything else. When Jesus, when, 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 uh, Jesus said that he's going to be the Savior of the body, that then says, or that should tell you, he's not going to be the Savior of all these other bodies. Now, is that, is that too hard? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but, I, but people, I, people are also getting saved in the denominational church. How do you know that? How do you know that? Because they're, they're turning away from sin, 
their, their life is being changed by God. By that, that's, not, that's not what the Bible says. See, that's a myth. That's a myth. It's a myth to say these people are getting saved in these man-made churches. If you can be saved in a man-made church, why do you need the church that Christ built? So what denomination do you go, what church do you go to? I'm not in denomination. I'm in the church that you read about in the Bible, the church of Christ. What what church are you in? Why is why are so why are people so afraid or embarrassed by the church they're in? You're on the word from the Lord. How you doing, brother Jane? I'm doing good, Eugene. Why are people afraid to tell you what church they're in? Brother James, I think it's because it's kind of just like me. Before I got into the Church of Christ, well, really, before I obeyed the gospel, I heard the gospel being preached by Johnny, you, and others. But the fact was, I accepted, but I didn't want to obey because my mechanical music was one of the things that were holding me back. Right, and I felt like I I could make a deal with God, and that's what's going on now. We want to add on, or we want to take away from the Word of God to make something right to suit us. But right. you can hear the gospel and accept the gospel, but unless you obey the gospel, ain't no near hearing it. And believe in it, and um, accepting it, you must obey. It. So it's not hard to obey the gospel if you just do what God said do. That's right. You got it's got to be obedience. Absolute right. Now, how can some and how can someone say they've obeyed the Lord, and then wind up in the church that the Lord never told them to get into? I wasn't saying I was flip flopping. But you was, uh, you know, I, I still say today, if it hadn't been for you on Mechanical Music, I still probably would have been flip-flop. But you well, made me mad enough until you woke me up. And I thank God for that because that's why today I have obeyed the God. Well, you know what, Eugene? I hope, I hope that... Uh, I'm going to be able to have a televised discussion with a preacher from the Christian church yep. on instrumental music. And maybe it'll, maybe it'll have the same effect on him. I hope so. I talked to, I talked to a, a preacher from the Christian church last night, Leakesville Christian Church. He said, it sounded good to be on TV. Be glad to do it. We're going to get together and set up some time. So, uh... You know, I, ho I hope that the, the same thing can happen. I hope it will. I hope the same thing happen to him that happened to me. I do, too. We need the God. I do, too. Thank you, sir. All right. Have a good night. You want to work with the Lord? Uh, yes. I'd just like to tell you that I'm a Baptist, and I'm proud of it, and I'm a part of the body of Christ, washed in the precious blood prove of it. the Lord Jesus. Can you prove it? And if you think Can you prove it? only pick church is going to happen, I feel sorry for you because I'm going to be there. Ma'am, you, you, you can't find the Baptist church as part of the body of Christ. You may be proud to be in the Baptist church, or but you can't find it in the Bible. Be a prize. You can't find it in the Bible. Everybody that's, been, that's accepted the Lord Jesus and is washed in his blood is a part of the body of Christ. Just because your church is named the church of Christ don't mean duly squat. So, so it doesn't? No. So why, are you saying there's nothing in a name? Because you could be named the church of Christ so you, you're a tadpole. And if you had okay. the Lord Jesus, shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you don't think it's important enough to wear the name of Christ? What? You don't think it's important to wear the name of Christ? We do every day of our life and we're no, Baptist. No, you don't. You're a Baptist. You just said you're a Baptist. I am Baptist and I'm proud to be a Baptist because my 
The church I go to is God's church. No, it's not, ma'am. It's the Baptist church. Body of Jesus. Ma'am, it's the Baptist church. You just said it's the Baptist church. Now, why do you want to turn around and say the Baptist church belongs to the Lord Let me, when it doesn't even have his name on it? Let me tell you something. Ma'am, you're not telling me. I want to hear something from the Bible. The church won't get you to heaven. The ch the, did you not just, did we not just go through this with the, with the previous caller? Christ is the Savior of the body, and the church is the body. Now, you want to tell me that you won't get to heaven the, by being in a church? But you're not, your church don't have to be named the church of Christ to be, be that. The church you're in has to be the church that the Lord bought. And, and it is. No, and it's my, not. our church is. Ma'am, your church is the Baptist church. Why don't you put the name of the church of Christ on it then? Think about John the Baptist. You think he went to hell? You think John the Baptist was in the Baptist church? I don't know if he was or not, but his name then why, was... Then why are you, why are you wearing the name of John... I feel Why are you wearing John's name and not Christ's name? I, I feel really sorry for you folks. You're pathetic because any Now wait a minute. Don't raise your voice. Let's just have a conversation here. And the Lord Jesus and the sin saved is a part of the body of Christ. Then why are you in the Baptist church? Why are you in the Baptist body? It's just made up of a believers. Ma'am, ma can we have a... Baptist church, a Catholic church, a Presbyterian church. If you washed in the blood and repented, you are saved. And you can sit up there and talk all you want to, but I know where I'm going. Ma'am, now listen. I go to a bad Now, don't hang up on me. Let me ask a question. Don't hang up. Hang up on you. I, all right. Now, let me ask you a question. Why is it that you are so proud of wearing John the Baptist's name, but you won't wear his cousin's name? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wearing John the Baptist's name. You just said you were. I said, do you think John the Baptist is going to hell? No, That's John the I'm... Baptist wasn't in the Baptist church either. Baptist? Do you think John the Baptist was in the Baptist church? I have no idea. Then why don't you bring it up then? Why don't you want to wear the name of Christ? That's what I I'm asked asking you. you. Was John the Baptist going to hell? No, he wasn't. But he wasn't in the Baptist church either. His name was John Christ. He wasn't in the name. He wasn't in the Baptist church either. But That's my me... point. You you said name you want the... to bring up John the Baptist, but he wasn't in the Baptist church. Baptist the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Why bring up John the Baptist? He wasn't in the Baptist church. What does it matter what church you're in? Everybody if Jesus died for the church, you don't think that's important? Let me tell you something. Ma Every church Ma you, Ma'am, you're telling me something, but I, I don't hear the Bible. Chris? I want to know why you think the church is not important when Jesus died for the church. Acts 20 and 28. He died for my church. No, he didn't. He you're in the Baptist it. church, ma'am. If Jesus bought your church, then why don't you put the name of Jesus on it? Uh, why don't, I tell you what. You know what? You just put, no, no, don't hang up. Don't you hang up. You like that other. Ma'am, don't hang up. Don't hang up, ma'am. What? Ma'am, I know you think I'm pitiful because I'm showing you the truth. I don't but I, was, I can assure you this, ma'am. I know that you don't love Jesus because you won't even wear his name. You're just a liar. You won't wear his name. A liar and in danger of hell fire. Ma'am, you won't wear his name. Uh, you are just a liar. I this? do love my now, Lord. Now, don't hang up when I ask this. Love my Lord, and I don't, belong don't hang up, to him. I'm going to ask you a question. Don't hang up. No, because I know I'm saved. Ma'am, okay, I know you think you know that, but you're believing a myth. No, let, I'm... Let me ask you a question. No, you let are. Let me ask you a question, please. No, you are. If Have you, you love Jesus so much, Jesus. let's come by and let's see if you'll put... The Church of Christ meets here instead of the Baptist Church. No, because my church is Baptist Church. You I know it's not. I, I that's don't right. Go, go to ahead a church and remember. As stupid that's, as you folks. Thank God, my church. What, what church are you a member of then? Uh, where, do you, where do you go to church? Where's the Baptist Church? Where is it? What Baptist Church do you go to? I go to Willis Memorial Baptist Church, and Hayward Alcon is my pastor, and he is a firm believer and a good Christian man. Okay. I can tell you that. All right. So let's ask him the question. Maybe he'll give an answer that you won't give. What well, do you, will mean you think he'll give an answer? answer? But now, I told you the name of the church. I know. I'm going to go ask him. You can name West your Memorial church. West Memorial Baptist. Walter, but if you haven't. But you know what, ma'am? If you were to ask him to call in and give an answer, he wouldn't do what, it. What does John 3.16 tell you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. Is that the only verse in the Bible that you know? Him should not perish but have everlasting life and it does not stipulate that you have to go to a church it's called that's named the church of christ well ma'am it doesn't stipulate a lot of things in there did you not just hear what we've just been discussing God. there's a lot of things that are not in john 3 16. 
Does John 3, do you have to repent? Do you, does a person have to repent to be saved, ma'am? Look, does a, a person have to repent to be saved, ma'am? Ma'am, does a person have to repent to be saved? Ma'am, does, be... does a person have to repent to be saved? Does a person have to repent to be saved? Are we going to have a conversation? Well, not the, the Church of Christ. Does a person have to repent to be saved? The church I go to is the church Ma of... Ma'am, you're not going to... Why, why do you want to bring up John 3.16 and then go back to the discussion? I don't anymore because I see that you're... I know you're, not, I know you're going to hang up like because that. you don't want to answer. You just want to talk to the Because I'm going to tell you one last time. I know where I'm going I, when I leave this... I know, I know where you're going to. Sorry for you. I know where you're going to, ma'am. I'm going to heaven. No, you're not. No, you're not. Don't you tell me I'm not. Why? This wicked as Satan, and now, I don't want to talk now, to you now, anymore. Are you, Good night. are you telling me how bad I am, but I can't tell you how bad you are? Now, that's that's typical Baptist right there. See? I'm bad. I'm wicked. I'm the devil. But don't tell me I'm going to hell. Well, I tell you what, man. You can't find your church in the Bible, and neither can your pastor. And I'm going to ask him. We're going to find him, get in contact with him. West Memorial Baptist Church. We're going to get in contact with him. And... Uh, we're going to see if maybe he'll give an answer that you won't give, okay? You're on the word of the Lord. How you doing? I'm doing well. You on the air? Uh, a denomination doesn't make a church. I agree. There's no denomination in the Bible. So why are you all arguing about it? Because why would you be in a denomination if God didn't say anything about it? There is a church we need to be talking about. It's just not a denomination. Yeah, it's called the body of Christ. Okay. So are all denominations in the body of Christ? There was no denominations in the body of Christ. Okay. So shouldn't we be telling people not to be in a denomination since it's not part of the body of Christ? Well, you could try to go there, but I believe too many people would have something to say about it. Well, I know. I, I think the, the last caller was evident of that. She wants to be in a, in a church that is not in the Bible, but yet still try to say it, that it belongs to Jesus. And I'm saying Jesus has a church. Why don't we just get into his church? I think that's why we need to be talking about it. Which church are you, refer you referring to? I'm referring to the, the Lord's church, the church he built. And he, bought, he paid for it with his blood, Acts 20, 28. It's the church of Christ. It belongs to him. When I say church of Christ, I'm talking about the church that belongs to Christ as opposed to the church of men, the church that belongs to men. That's the church we need to be in. And simply saying, well, I'm in the church of Christ, but you're in some of these man-made churches, that doesn't, that doesn't cut it. What what church do you go? What church are you a member of? Hello. Uh, We're running out of time, sir. What church are you a member of? I go to Maple Lawn Baptist. Maple Lawn Baptist. Yeah. Okay. So why are you in the Baptist church? If denominations. We're not going to go there. <laughs> uh, well, I, I knew you wouldn't want to because you can't find the Bible. But I'm saying, why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? That's what I thought. Okay. Maple Lawn Baptist. So the folks at Maple Lawn Baptist don't want to tell why they're in the Baptist church. You're on a word from the Lord. Yeah, I find it interesting that uh, Muslim church is not in the Bible. And Buddhism is not in the Bible. And if you talk to a Buddhist or a Muslim, they would say they're going to heaven too, and they know they are. Right. So is a word from the Lord, and no one who called in gave any word from the Lord to support why they're in the church they're in. That's right. Well, they would, and and but that, but what they would they would say criticize the Buddhist and the Muslims because they don't believe in Jesus. You know, that's how that's how they would couch it. Well, they what, what, also they probably also criticize the Seventh Day Adventists, the Mormons, the exactly, yeah. Sun Yun Moon, and right. many others who claim to believe in right too. But but you know the only difference is they're drawing the line over here and we're drawing the line right here. 
You know, we're saying there's one. We're drawing the line after one church, and they're drawing the line over here after a couple thousand. You know, and eliminating a few other hundred. Well, the problem with that is, is if you can make up your own name of your church, then there's thousands being made up each day. That's right. So, That's right. But thanks, good show. All right, all right. They give me the wrap up, wrap up signal. So uh, thanks for your call, friends. Listen, we're just trying to be mythbusters, trying to give you the truth trying to un uncover the truth and help you to see that you may be believing a myth. And I and all you folks out there, I know you're sincere. I know you think you know you're going to heaven when you die in, in the Baptist church or Methodist church or whatever. But the fact of the matter is that's a myth. It's not in the Bible. It's not in truth. And we're going to uncover the truth starting next Monday or starting next week. 20, what, 21 hours is the, is the, is, is the count. We're going to be coming to you nearly every night uh, for the next two weeks, and we're going to be giving you truth, busting myths, exposing fables, and helping you to see what uh, the truth of the matter really is. We want to uh, uh, invite you to come be with us when you can. Here's our contact information. Come out to the tent uh, uh, each night, June 22nd to July 3rd. We'll be out there. Come, bring your pastor. Don't be a chicken. And bring your pastor. Come out to the tent. We we'll hope to see you there. Have a good night. I couldn't stay in China at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them. Some y'all, get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please. Don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane.